we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have not done, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in the world and walk in your ways to the glory of the Holy Name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. Called an ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. O you who have been my help. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Teach me your way, O oh, oh Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my cannabis. Strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. to me and answer me. Oh, you who have been my help, forsake me not, O oh God of my salvation. In and peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you good things that surpass all understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after Trinity, 1 Kings, uh, the 19th chapter. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. The Lord said to him, Go. Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. The one who escapes from the sword of Hazael shall Yehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Yehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen in front of him, and he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him, cast his cloak upon him, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. Love, a tender heart, 
and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless. For to this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. Whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. This is the word of the Lord.
joy which come only through faith in our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, the one who was, who is, and who is yet to come. The text for today is from the epistle, 1 Peter chapter 3, 15. Have no fear of them. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Have you ever denied Christ? Given an opportunity to confess him, you kept your mouth shut. You kind of hemmed and hawed and squirmed away from making a clear confession. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, Everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. You may remember that we quote that verse at the beginning of the confirmation rite. Because God calls those that he baptizes to confess the faith into which they have been baptized. And as the church has always done, we baptize babies because baptism is a washing of regeneration and a renewal in the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> those who reject the baptizing of babies, well, they often point out how many of them never make a personal confession of the faith. And it is a scandal. Parents bring their babies to be baptized and then never bother to raise them in the faith. Even worse, many of them who do get through instruction and make the confession of Christ on Confirmation Day end up leaving the church quite soon and pursuing the standards and the values and the beliefs of the godless culture in which we live. But let's clear something up. To confess Christ isn't about making a personal testimony, sharing how you personally feel about Christ. To confess Him is about being prepared to always defend the faith. Your feelings are notoriously fickle. You can be up, you can be down, and how you're feeling about Christianity, what never changes are the promises that God has made to you in Christ. So, to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you is always being ready and able to defend the faith with God's word. Forget your personal feelings. They're going to change from day to day. Someone bound for hell in, a, in unbelief and impenitent sin has this dramatic awakening in which their life just suddenly turns around and they believe in Jesus. Another, maybe each of you, has had no moment like that. By God's grace, you were baptized as an infant. And maybe you cannot remember a time when you didn't believe in Christ as your Savior. There is no one-size-fits-all religious experience. So the only religious experience to which the Bible points you is in your holy baptism. Christ Jesus said, He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Thus, to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, in about spilling your guts to someone about how much Jesus means to you, it's to rightly speak when asked what God has said about himself and what you have been given to believe and to teach and to confess. God's word gives the reason for the hope that is in you. For instance, you rightly confess when you simply speak the Apostles' Creed. In the first article, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. You're saying that God provides for all your needs. You're confessing that you did not evolve from an animal, that God formed Adam from the dust of the ground, that and he made Eve out of Adam's rib, that God brought the woman to the man and established marriage and blessed it with children. You will be called ignorant for rejecting what science has supposedly proven. You will be accused of hate for rejecting same-sex unions and defending marriage as God established it, a lifelong joining of one man and one woman. But what else can you do? You must confess the truth, and so you defend it. In the second article, you confess Christ. You can do no better in making a confession than to simply quote the small catechism. It's what God says. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, 
who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, and not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, even as he has risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. In Article 3, you confess that you couldn't know Christ at all, that you could not come to him by your own reason or strength, that the Holy Spirit has called you by the gospel and he has brought you to the saving faith by his grace alone. Without the Holy Spirit, you'd be blind, dead, and an enemy of God. With the Holy Spirit, you are enabled to believe everything that God has revealed to you in his word. You confess, and so you defend at the same time. It's not the mumbling of an indifferent whatever to whatever God has said. It is the firm and it is the confident amen to all that he promises. The reason for the hope that is in you. So, you are given the Holy Spirit in baptism. He works in you constantly by the gospel and all of the Holy Scriptures that you hear or you read. He works in you as you eat and drink the sacrament of his body and blood. He works in you to trust the divine mercy that forgives all your sin for Christ's sake and guarantees you eternal life in heaven. By his working, you are enabled to confess your hope. At first, this St. Peter today had depended on himself and his strength. He boasted that he would die before he would ever deny Christ. And then he denied Christ. In his pride, he fell away. When Christ looked at Peter when he was being tried, Peter cried bitterly tears of sorrow. You see, Peter had tried to be a Christian without trusting in Christ to give him the strength. My friends, that dog just won't hunt. Before you can confess your faith, your faith must be firmly in Christ alone. Christ graciously forgave and then he restored Peter. That's why Christ in the first petition of the Lord's Prayer teaches you to pray, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name lays claim to the holy name that was placed upon you in baptism. Hallowed be thy name confesses he who has been planted deep within you. We sing of it in Thomas Kingo's wonderful hymn, On My Heart, <coughs> imprint your image. Blessed that Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me, is my life, hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. <clears throat> Christ's image imprinted upon you by faith into your heart sets him above all the worldly things that perish. To treasure the word and the promises of God more than money, job, status, popularity, or, or anything else that the world wants you to prize is to know what's truly valuable. And then you'll be ready. You'll be ready to answer those who ask you for a reason for the hope that is in you. The imprint of Christ makes you confident in that for which you hope. St. Peter was writing to the Christians who were suffering and being persecuted because of their faith. They had reason to resent the persecution that they were receiving from people who were hostile, unbelievers. But Peter told them that it was an opportunity, an opportunity to defend their faith. But they were to do so with meekness and with fear, that is, with a gentle and respectful spirit. Make no mistake, Christians are at war. The enemy is the devil with his lies, false religions, temptations, and those of the world that he is constantly employing against you. Just remember that those who oppose what you believe, who consider you to be a fool, an ignoramus, an impediment to social progress, are also souls for which Christ died. St. Paul, the greatest Christian missionary, became an enemy of Christ. 
St. Peter, whom we just spoke of, ultimately confessed the truth without fear. He was finally crucified because of his Christian confession. But he was indeed the very same who, when challenged by a little girl, denied even knowing Christ. You must not, you must not regard those who reject Christ and his gospel as your enemy. See them as prospective members of our congregation and of the Holy Christian Church. Christ compared the spreading of the gospel today to fishing. He told Peter to put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Peter knew there were no fish. He just spent several hours fishing there, but Christ told him, let down your nets for a catch, and so that's what he did. As you know, he caught more fish than two boats could hold. Those fishermen worked with nets, not hooks. And the gospel which we speak isn't bait. You don't need a lure, a gimmick, to get people into church. Christ's gospel is a net, the reason for the hope that is in you, and not some system of rational proofs for Christianity. Now, indeed, you should shoot down false arguments that are made against what you believe. It's a good idea for a person getting ready to go off to college to, to know the arguments of those who believe in evolution. It's good for Christians to know how the Bible has been preserved from corruption over the centuries, how the various so-called errors people think they find in the Bible aren't. Bogus arguments against Christian faith need to be exposed for what they are. John Warwick Montgomery a great defender of the faith, began his Christian journey as an attempt to destroy and disprove Christianity by demonstrating that Christ did not rise from the dead. He thought that debunking the resurrection would destroy Christianity. His plan was solid. He could rationally show that Christ couldn't have risen from the dead. But in trying to disprove the resurrection, he, he became persuaded that it happened just as the scriptural witnesses said because the gospel net had captured his heart. The lesson here that rationally proving Christ rose from the dead, absolutely disproving attacks on the biblical reliability, those still will not convince unbelievers to believe. The hope that is in you is in fact grounded in facts, but facts aren't what create faith. Faith comes in hearing which the Holy Spirit by that enables you to believe in the blood of Christ, that it forgives your sin. You see, people reject Christ not because they have some highfalutin intellectual objection to Christ. They reject Christianity because whether they realize it or not, they just don't want to admit they're sinners. They do not want to believe they're accountable to him who will return to judge the living and the dead. They'd rather deny God than think that they must face him as their judge. And so they put their hands in the sand, heads in the sand. After all, out of sight is out of mind. The hope that is in you is all that people need. You aren't afraid to face Christ on Judgment Day because you believe that he suffered and died to take away all your sin. Never cease going where you hear of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Remain steadfast in weekly church attendance. Confess your sin and receive absolution. Trust what God gave you in baptism. Persist in eating and drinking the medicine of immortality. It all gives eternal life by the gift of sin's forgiveness. As you receive these precious gifts, God is made ever more holy within you, and you will be enabled to give reason for the hope that is in you, to rightly and gladly make confession and defense. In Jesus' precious name, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, 
very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. prayers this morning. We continue to pray for Howard Grader. We pray for Winnie Lenson's nephew, Ed, who's recovering from back surgery. Pray for a man from North Platte named Lyle Flanders, who's been here in critical condition. We pray uh, that the Lord God would send rain uh, as our state has many wildfires. Be 
with those who suffer for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation and sorrow. Grant a rich measure of your love, Lord, in your mercy. All these things, whatever else you know we need, grant us, Father in heaven, for the sake of your Son, who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. He and our delight to celebrate the sacrament of our Lord's body and blood. We believe, teach, and confess about this sacrament exactly what God's Word says of it, that it offers to us, under the outward forms of bread and wine, the very body and the very blood of Christ, to eat and to drink. It brings us the forgiveness of sin, for which we have such great need. We believe, teach, and confess also that this sacrament is to be celebrated in the unity of the faith that we confess together before this altar. Therefore, along with the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and partner churches, we practice what's called close or closed or fellowship communion. If you're a member of Trinity or one of those churches and you intend to go to the sacrament today, fill out the card, put a mark next to your name indicating you went to the sacrament, hand this card to the usher when you come from the pew. If you're visiting with us today and would uh, like to become a community, if you have a question, if you have a need, uh, we'd love to uh, answer or help in any way that we can. Please fill out the visitor side of the card, mark it, lay it beside you in the pew. It'll be picked up after this divine service.
we should at all times and all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through who Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you, body and soul, unto life everlasting. Lord in peace. Lovely. 